Woohoo! All right. We're live. And they are muted. And of course, this iPad went into low power mode and is not displayed anymore, which means I have to the whole thing. <laughs> Again. Continue. Please. Please. Oh, I have to hit start broadcast. Huh? Start broadcast. And it takes three seconds for whatever reason. And then I have to click on a button. There we go. And then this can start lagging, of course, because everything just won't fall apart. You got to let it catch up. All right, testing, testing lag. Not too bad, not too bad. All right, so last we left off in our notes, we were trying to graph this natural, or not this natural logarithm, this logarithmic function. And the way that I showed you how to do that in our last example was to plot the points in a table of the normal, the inverse function, the exponential function, and then you just flip the x and y, flip the x and y, flip the x and y. So we did kind of a quicker example over here, and now we're on to yet another example. Again, the general idea is you plot points. Um, on, well, you plot the points over here. You switch the column so that this one goes over here. There it is. This zero goes over here. There it is. You switch everything, graph it, and then you're done remembering that you always have a vertical asymptote on your y axis. We used to have a horizontal asymptote on our x axis, but now that we reflect it over the line y equals x, we now have a vertical asymptote. I can't see everyone on Zoom, but I'm assuming that they're nodding their heads and saying, yeah, that sounds familiar, because we are now on to example two, which we almost finished, and then we'll do an example three, call it a day in terms of notes, and then we'll work on, I think we'll just jump into homework. It's really hard to do classwork um, with Zoom. So, from here, just as a review of our process, we had to do the inverse of this function. So we're trying to find the inverse, p inverse, because this is p, that's p inverse. From there, we just switched our x and the y, so the x and the y changed. From there, we needed to undo the logarithm. The only way to undo a logarithm is by doing exponentiation with this base. So we have a base of one half, base of one half, where we rewrote the x, rewrote the log base one half of y plus one. From there, cross, 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 leaving us with just y plus one down here, and still one half the power of x. To get y by itself, we just had to subtract by one, giving us the inverse function. So from there, we are going to be plotting points into this function. We're plugging things into x and seeing what comes out. We're, this is the inverse function table. And last we left, left off, we plugged in zero, and we got zero. We plugged in one, and we got negative one half. And we predicted that if I kept going down two, three, et cetera, all the way down, these numbers would get more fractiony. is the word that I use. It, they'll get really, really close to negative one while still being gross fraction. So I said, well, what if we go, and this is where I need to start with new stuff today. What if we start going this direction backwards instead of going down by half, maybe we'll do something else and we'll try plugging that in. So in this part right here, I'm going to try plugging in Again, I'm, I'm coming from this formula over here and plugging in for x. I'm taking one half to the power of, again, the power is this power right here, power of negative one. And then I'm going to, at the very end of the day, subtract one. So the question for everyone right now, we'll give it to Diego. So I know that you're actually here. One half to the power of negative one. Diego, how do I do it? Well, for that, negative one just basically means flip that. Yep. So it just basically. So it turns into two over one, now to positive one, which is, as you said, basically just two. So that means that this term right here is two, and Diego, two minus one. It's just one. It's just this one. All right, that means a Zoom kid is going to have a harder next problem. Again, if I look at this table, I need to now plug in one half to the power of, again, I'm, I'm just using our formula right here. I wrote the one half. It's going to be the power of whatever this thing is. It's going to be a power of negative one half, or sorry, negative two. And then at the end of the day, subtract one. We're going to figure out what that is. So off the side, I'm trying to figure out how do I do one half to the power of negative two. Someone on Zoom, unmute yourselves, explain what to do. What? Sorry, someone came in. What did you say? So I'm asking one of you three on Zoom, I need to simplify this to a simple number. How do I do this problem? And I'm basing off of Diego's problem over here. 
half negative. If it's a negative power, that means it's a fraction, right? You flip the fraction. You do indeed flip the fraction. So it's now one over two, and now it's the power of. Here. So is it four? Yeah, I would think it was four because. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't even flip the fraction there. Two over one, and then yes, it's going to be the power of two, which is going to be two squared over one squared, which is four over one, which is just four. four. Yeah, very nice. All right, and then still in Chloe. Oh, too far. I now have four, and then I do the next step, and I get my final answer of. So coming back to Chloe on Zoom. Chloe said that this thing is four. Keep going. Are you guys still muted? Okay. No, we're all just thinking. Oh, okay, well, I will make it as explicit as possible. This is four. You now need to subtract one. Uh, Chloe? Oh, sorry, we three. all said three. Okay, three. All right, nice. And then I'm gonna have someone new, either Georgia or Alden, we're gonna do the next one. And I'm running out of room, I'm gonna try to write it as small as possible. I still have one half. I'm gonna take it to the power of negative three, and then I'm gonna subtract one at the very end. So the first problem that I have is how do I do one half to the power of negative three, either Giorgio or Alden, go for it. Um, you flip the fraction. You do it, as far as I see it. So it's two to the third, to which the third. is eight. Yeah. yeah. All right, and then all of them, the very last step. Damn, two eight? Two. Yeah, so you have eight right here. Oh, oh yeah. minus one. Oh, minus one. Seven. <laughs> so we have our answers here. And I think after that, it might go off the table. So I think we're kind of done. Okay, what we have just done as a roadmap. Can I ask a question, please? Yeah. Can you go back to the original question? Because I'm kind of confused on how you went from the original question to, to that. Because spots on the board. I don't know. Well, I understand like log one half, so you're doing log to a power because it's like the what power function or um, whatever. <laughs> But it's x plus one. Why are you doing x minus one? So the reason that we're doing x minus one is because we're doing the inverse operation. It's really hard to evaluate good values for a log base one half of a number. I don't know what to plug in for x to make answers come out nice. But luckily, if we do the inverse operation, my numbers are always going to be nice, assuming I don't have weird fractions down here. But if I plug in zero, I get out a nice number. If I plug in negative one, I get out a nice number. By doing a table of the inverse operation, the table is much easier to do. And then once we have the inverse operation, we're going to invert it again, getting back to log base one half. But inverting the table is super, super easy. We just switch our x and our y and we're done. OK, I'm just reiterating. You are finding the inverse of that logarithm and you're using that to get like the one half squared minus one because at the end that last step is one half to the power of x equals y you're just subtracting the one exactly because that was the last step that we did to invert the operation or to invert the function you're welcome okay thank you for re-explaining yeah you're welcome good question i always appreciate questions like this so from here i'm almost done i'm almost ready to graph Again, I have a table for the inverse of this function. I don't want to graph the inverse. I want to graph the actual function p of x. So we'll give it to Giorgio. You need to make me a table, Giorgio, of x and p of x. What values go in this table? And just making sure you guys know that you're still on mute. Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out because I don't know where to, I don't even know where to start. I'll give you a hint. Over here, we had a graph of the inverse, and we wanted to get to this table or a table of the inverse, and we want to get to this table of the normal function. What we did was the one and the zero switch spots, and I got one and zero as opposed to zero and one. One and three change into a three and one. 
So what does that mean for this table over here? How do I get from this table down into this table? Oh, just by switching around. So you'll start negative one on X side. One. There shouldn't be any negative ones on the x side because there are no negative ones on the, the y side over here. So start with one on the left side. Start with one on the left side. Um, okay, I can start with one. I'm going to put it right here though. Okay. Um, negative one half. Oh, because there's no negatives. Never mind. Yeah, I'm really glad that you you caught that. You can have negatives for a logarithm. You just can't have any negatives for the inputs. You can't have negative heights, just not negative inputs. Would you would you just have half? Yeah. A half. No, there shouldn't be any positive one halves. Let me give you the first step, Georgia, and then you can pick it up from there. My first step is to switch my negative three with my seven. So instead of writing negative three comma seven here, instead I'm going to write seven negative three. I, I was switching the wrong number. Okay, keep going for the table though. Tell me what to write. Um, then you'll have three negative two. Okay. One negative one. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I thought you had a calculator. Um, zero, zero. And then you'll have one negative, uh, negative one half, just switched. All right, there it is. It's time to graph those values now. So I'm coming up here to the graph. Then we're going to go to seven, negative three. So seven and then negative three. And I have a point. Then I'm going to do three, negative two. Three, negative two. And I have a point. Then I'm going to do one, negative one. One, negative one. I'm going to have a point. And I'm going to go to zero, zero. I'm going to have a point. Then I'm going to go to negative a half, one. So negative a half, one. I'm going to have to zoom in here. Negative a half, one goes up right here. Remember, in every single one of these logarithms, no matter what, you are going to have a vertical asymptote. Vertical meaning it's going to have straight up and down. Can you guys see where the vertical asymptote is going to be? Negative one. It is going to be at negative one. And it makes sense just looking at this. Usually on the inside of parentheses means do the opposite. Right now, because next to the x, in the x direction, I think I'm going to go plus one to the right. So it used to be right here. I would normally think plus one to the right. But because we're inside the parentheses, we're going to do the opposite. And we're going to move one to the left. And my asymptote is going to be right here. And you can kind of already see it heading up closer and closer to that point already by our points. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a graph of this function. Did you just ask a question? I did not. I'm just showing you that you have a vertical asymptote at negative one. You can look okay. at it, eyeballing it. You can look at it algebraically and know how your operations in here affect that graph. OK, I'm sorry. You just had gone silent, so I didn't know if you asked us a question. No, I was meticulously trying to make sure that the graph was correct. OK. All right, so that is the easiest way that I can think of to do these graphs. There are other ways as well. Um, we should try probably one more to get the hang of this, and then we can go into the homework. Does that sound like a plan? Yes. All right, are there any questions before we move on? And zoom out to the entire process. And that was all of example number two. All right. I'm going to assume from the silence that we're okay with that. 
Um, we're we're discussing amongst we're, ourselves. We're good. Okay. How about this? To give me more information aside from silence, um, both now with a brief explanation, everyone give me a, the verbal five. I can see Diego's just a five. So verbal five for the Zoom kids. How well do you think you could do a problem like example number two as of right now? Three. For me, three and a half or four. Golden said two and George said three. All right. And then Diego's at a four. All right. Our last example, I don't think it's going to fit down there. We can try to squeeze it in. I'll just make the graph slightly smaller and I can zoom in. I would like the notes not be one and a half pages. It's going to be front and back. We have front and then back, and we're going to call it good. So this last example, what are we on? Example number three. Example three. In fact, I'm going to erase all this to give myself more room. Uh, someone turned it into precision eraser. All right. Example number three. I want to graph. Um, I'm going to make it kind of a hard one again because I think that's the best way to learn. Got to weight lift heavy weights, and then you can also weight lift the light weights as well. I'm going to say j of x is equal to um i need to look at the class for full on give me a sec i want to make sure i'm not making this too hard yeah i don't put any numbers out front i do things like this i'll say log base what have i done so far i've done a base of one half i've done a base of three um let's do a base of do you guys want to yeah we'll do a fraction we'll say one third Base one third of x, whatever, choose number between one and five. x minus three, and we'll also say uh, minus one third. All right, here we go. Again, the general procedure here is find the inverse, make a table, switch the table, graph. Do I need to write that down? Would that be helpful? Step one, find inverse. Step two, table of the inverse. Step three, switch. I can spell. Switch the table. I think a better word would have been to invert the table, but I think switch is an easier word for most students. And then step number four, graph. That's our procedure. In a nutshell. All right, let me make sure that I have enough room to put the actual graph. So let me do that now. Graph. It's going to be this picture right here. I can make it small and I can zoom into it. Um, all right. Can I move you up there? No, all right. Let's give it to someone on Zoom. What am I going to do first? Find the inverse of the logarithm. Perfect. Tell me what to write. So you change out the x for a y. So then it's x equals log a third y minus three and then the minus one. Excellent. You did two things. First, you converted the j of x into a y, and then you switch the x and the y. Perfect. All right, anyone, I'll give it to Diego, that way it's more directed. Diego, do the next step. Uh, one third log base one third. Uh, you to exponentiate? Yes, we definitely need to exponentiate because we have this logarithm. And the only way to undo a logarithm is to exponentiate. Unfortunately, this is all the logarithm. You don't belong. Oh, my fault. Uh, plus one. Yeah. Plus one on both sides. We get it. Yeah, x plus one is equal to log base one third of that y minus three step. And I want to be as clear as possible with my steps here. From here to here, we add one. All right. Um, someone other than Chloe on Zoom. So either Alden or Giorgio, what do I do next? We're thinking. We heard you, but we're thinking. Excellent. Thank you. 
Yeah. Base one third. On yeah. both. Exactly. Yeah. So you're exponentiating with a base of one third. So I have one third to the power of all that stuff is equal to one third to the power of all that stuff. Give me a second to write it down. All right. And then, Giorgio, what will happen on that right side of our equation? Uh, you'll be left with the parentheses, y minus three. Exactly. Cancel, cancel, cancel. And then the, the left side has not changed. It's still one third the power of x plus one. And then from there, can you add the plus three? Exactly. Yeah. So from here to here, plus three. And I'm going to get y by itself. And I'm going to have one third the power of x plus one. And then I'm going to add three to it. All right. Back to Diego. Oh, wait. Chloe was next, huh? Well, Chloe did the next step. I want to give it to Diego, and then I'm going to give it back to Chloe. Diego, what are we going to do for our next step? Do you remember the procedure? So we're going to make the table, right? Exactly. All right. So let's go ahead and start making. This is the inverted table. So technically, this function, what do we have? It was j. Technically, this is j inverse. Sorry, j inverse of x is equal to this one third to the power of x plus one plus three. We're going to make a table that inverse. So I'm going to say that the table looks like this. I have an x and I have a j inverse of x. I don't know how many values I'm going to have, but I think that should be enough for me. Yeah, pick a value. One. One. I'm going to go in the middle just because I'm worried. I have no idea what's about to happen. I'm honest. Like, what's going to happen? Let's plug a one in and see what happens. I have a, a one third of the power of, and here's the, the one that's being plugged in, one plus one and then plus three. All right, I want to simplify this, Diego. How can I do that? Well, your first way to do is probably one plus one. Yep. That would be two. Yep. And then from that, that's just one third to the power of two. Yep, which is? Uh, I want to say what nine. Yes. It is, yeah. I'm let me write down the work that Diego's doing off the side. We have one third to the power of two, which is the same thing as one over three squared. Well, one squared is still one. That's why I skip that stuff. And then this was one ninth. So now we have one ninth plus three. And unfortunately, we have this disgusting fraction three and one ninth. Please, we can't put three over one. What they should say. We can't put three over. Yeah, we don't have any invert. It would be really nice to do a three over one and reverse this. I totally agree. Is there some number that we can plug in over here that would make this power into either a, a zero or a negative to make this nicer? I mean, can't you plug in any negative number? I mean, I can plug in negative 100, but I don't think that would be helpful. Negative one, at least, and negative two. Yeah, let's, let's, let's try that here. I'm going to move I'm gonna move you down. I'm going to move you down. Um, Diego wants to go to negative one. Zoom kids, you feel OK with that? I am okay with that. Negative one. I, I know that there's supposed to be a zero here, but we're going to skip that because I don't think it's going to be helpful. I think we're still going to have a disgusting fraction. All right. So when I do that problem now, I'm going to, you need to move down. All right. I'm going to say one third is not going to be the power of negative one plus one and then plus three at the very end. Oh, wait. I messed up. Can I ask a question? Please do. Okay. Even if you do do zero, Zero plus one is one, so then it's just a third plus three, and it's three and a third, right? Mm, no, not quite. Have you just changed your I'll show you. So over here on the side, we're trying to do this problem for scratch work of one third to the power of zero, then plus three, right? From here, anything to the power of zero. Everyone on Zoom tried to set shut out on the same time. Got to sync up. One. <laughs> one. Yeah, it is one. I was hoping you could all be cute and shut out at the same time. But yes, it is one. And then you have just one plus three, right? Wait, so it's not. I thought it was X plus one, so zero plus one. 
Oh, you were like, you were saying if we had plugged in zero? Yes. Sorry, I totally misunderstood that. You are 100% correct. If we had plugged in zero, we would have had three plus one third, and three and a third is still a disgusting fraction. You are 100% correct. Oh, okay. I was just confused if I was doing it wrong. Oh, you were doing it correct. I just misheard. I thought you were plugging in the, the one that we were doing right now. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yep. So from here, this is going to be one third to the power of zero plus three, which is one plus three, which is four, and therefore our answer is negative one point four. I mean, these are the, the values in the table that I'm going to be using when I switch it. But I think from here on out, we're going to have really nice values. Let's give this one to um, Alden and see if she can do it. Let's go ahead and do a negative two. What happens when I do one third to the power of negative two plus one plus three? So like, um, like green, almost dark, kind of dark. It's three to the first, negative, negative first. So you flip it. So it's three plus three. What color? D plus three. Nice. Um, let's give it to Giorgio. Giorgio, what happens if I plug in negative three? Uh, you'll be left with negative two plus three, or one third negative two plus three. And then you yeah. yeah. And then that come out to um six plus three nine. So close. So be careful here. You did flip this correctly, but you said three squared was six. Try again. What's three squared? Oh nine. Oh nine plus three then is twelve. Okay. He said you were better. He said you were going to the beach instead. All right. Yeah, I think it's totally And I think by then we're going to be off the graph. So I'm going to go ahead and just stop and say, I don't even think Giorgio's is going to help us. It'll be off the graph. I think my graph goes out to 10, not to 12. Darn. All right. Well, sometimes that happens. It's good to get that practice in. All right. Let's see if Chloe remembers. The, wait, I've already asked Chloe in a procedure step. I'm going to ask Diego a procedure step. Let's see the back to Alden. What's the next step in our procedure, Alden? I'm actually, do we do more like more on the table or do we go on the graph? More on the table because by now we're already kind of off the graph. This graph um, up here goes out to 10, negative 10, negative 10, and 10. And we had a number that was 12. If we go any further, we're just going to get bigger and bigger numbers. Okay. I did not. So we graph it? Almost. That's step number four. We're on step number three, the intermediate step, because this is the inverse function. We don't have the actual function yet. You flip all the numbers? I don't. You do, yeah. We take the inverse of the inverse, getting back to the normal j of x function. Tell me what values go into this table. Um, positive three? I'm not sure. So remember, on the step for this, Table value, we're going to switch these two for the first step. So 12 minus negative three. I need, to, I think you need to read her comment and see what she wants. All in, keep going. What's the next one? Um, six, you negative two. Like, say, for example. Four minus one. And last one. Um, three, one, nine, one. Exactly. All right. And now, last procedure step. Giorgio has not been asked a procedural question. Now, what do we do with this table? Wait, what, like, do a graph it? Exactly, we graph it. So I'm gonna graph 12, negative three, which would have been right about here, I think. I don't know if you guys were able to see that. I went to 12-ish and I went up three-ish. It's off the table though. I'm gonna graph six, negative two. So I go six and then negative two. I'm gonna graph you. I wanna switch colors so it's easier to see. Six, negative two goes right there. Four, negative one is gonna go, four, negative one goes right there. And then I, I'm going to try the three and the one I come on. 
three and one ninth is really close to three, and then it's going to go up to a height of one. So it's going to come right there. So I only have, wait a second. Oh my gosh, you guys see, okay. There is a mistake up here. It's extra credit. Like it doesn't make sense. How does this make sense that I go like this? What's the mistake? I don't know what it looks like. I will tell you the mistake. Unfortunately, no one can get the extra credit unless they speak now in the next five seconds. Can we think? I, yes, yeah. Oh, what about the zero? That doesn't look bad. I, I swear that zero has to be uh, I mean, just to make sure that I'm sending everyone in the correct direction. These are correct. Oh, you just plotted them wrong. Wait, so if that's the correct, how? If you want to find it, guys, you got this. Okay. Right now, my mistake is it doesn't like a logarithm is not a quadratic. It doesn't do a parabola. I have to have some sort of asymptote. This and this and this, like. Something something is wrong with these four, and I can't figure out. Well, I can't. I, I spotted it immediately, and I'm telling you that these values down here are definitely correct. So something up here is wrong. What's wrong? Uh, is it that? Well. First of all, it's you plotted it the wrong way. The last was, 12 and negative three. I was supposed to say that. Yeah, you, you can get it to you. Yeah. So that's a mistake right here. I graphed 12 positive three. I should have graphed 12 negative three. This one should come down here, and then it would look like the inverse larger than with the asymptote. Yeah, so if you are. Oh, I didn't um, even notice there was a point there. Yeah, yeah, so I need to come down here and go to 12, negative three, which is right about that point right there. And now these points kind of line up like a logarithm should. The last question that we have to really be careful about is your asymptote. That's the super critical piece. Normally our asymptote is always at the Y axis, but this shift, this is a horizontal shift, an X direction. Again, this is the X axis. So it's this X axis shift. Normally I'll go left three, but because I'm on the inside of the parentheses, do the opposite. We're not gonna go left three, but we're gonna go right three. You can see that this point was almost on that electric fence. The electric fence is right there on positive three. And here's how I'm gonna graph this thing. There is the graph of log base one third of the quantity of x minus three and quantity minus one. Typically on each of these graphs, you have to have at least three very clearly marked points. In this case, I have one, two, three. This one was really, really close. In very extreme examples, I think I only give maybe one on the homework, you'll only be able to put two points because I have such a big number, like seven or something down here. Sometimes that means I can only have two clearly labeled points in the graph. Typically, it should be between three and four, though. All right, I'm hoping that now our fist of five of being able to graph logarithmic functions has either, hopefully it's increased, but if it stay the same because you're at such a high value, that also works. So, Diego, what's your fist of five? Four. Alden, what do you have? Three. Three, Chloe? Like four and a half or five. Wow, nice. And Giorgio? Four. All right, improvement. Very nice. Um, now it is time to switch over to the homework. I'm going to go ahead and stop the Zoom recording.